Going Medieval is a brilliant game. Anything this big is gonna leave you with a lot of questions. This video is going to go over some I've seen repeatedly asked either in my comment section or in the official Going Medieval Discord server. They cover info that both new and experienced players alike will benefit from and that you can't find in the in-game almanac. You normally use pins to keep tamed animals while you harvest what they produce, train them into pets, and or let them breed. But pins don't accept carnivores like dogs, which can make it difficult to keep these animals close to your base while you tame or train them. A dog will spawn in on the edge of the map and sit there, forcing you to run to it every day for a season or two while you try and train it. If you leave food outside your walls, the dog will come closer, but other animals will as well. The dog can also just wander off after eating. But while you can't have a settler rope a dog into a pen, you can still trick man's best friend into one. Construct an enclosure of fences with a one space gap. You don't need a pen marker or food yet, but a nearby stockpile of sticks will help. When the dog is close to being hungry, haul some food over. Raw meat, corpses, animal feed, or meals will all work. When the dog is actually hungry, it'll run over to eat. Then construct a wicker gate or a wall. Walls build much faster, it makes the timing a lot easier. This completed enclosure won't let dogs leave. They'll stay close to your base where you can easily train and feed them. You can also do this sort of technique with other animals that you want to keep close by, like deer or wolves, although you may need to use different foods. This technique works best in the winter or in early spring when there's less food on the map. Although you still can do this whenever, by harvesting any food plants and hauling off any corpses that are closer to where the dog is than your base. Traps are a really useful defensive tool. An enemy that runs over it has a chance of triggering it, which causes them to take damage and be slowed down. After your fight, settlers will reset the traps without consuming any resources. Higher tiers of traps, unlocked via the defensive structures 1 and 2 technologies, deal more damage and are more likely to successfully trigger instead of misfiring. I use straight lines for this example, but you never want to build your own like this because your own settlers will walk over them and set them off. The chance is low, but hits will often injure your settlers. Instead, set them up diagonally. Your settlers will then dart between them and avoid triggering any while they're resetting them or just moving through. Enemies won't know where any are, and they'll still trigger them. Fermentation isn't new, but it was massively reworked in the last major update. The fairly early technology fermentation will allow you to start making the basics of booze. Mash is made from vegetables, fruit juice from fruit, and curdling milk from milk. These have a bar that represents their progress towards being fermented. You need to store them in the right temperature to get actual booze. If they're kept below 4 degrees Celsius or 41 degrees Fahrenheit, they'll stay in this unusable state. If you keep them somewhere warmer than 10 Celsius or 50 Fahrenheit, then they'll rot into vinegar instead of fermenting. That leaves a narrow but achievable window, at which point they'll ferment in about 3 days. Higher tiers of booze, unlike Locked via the brewing technology and made at the brewing station work the same way but use more specific ingredients to make higher quality booze that gives your colonist a mood buff. The final relevant technology is distilling. That station will let you turn even low quality booze, like dubious booze or rough wine, into high quality alcohol. This is fit for medicinal uses but can also be consumed to get your colonist the highest mood buff available. Maintaining the fermenting ingredients at the right temperature can be a little bit tricky but it's not too hard once you know what you're doing. You're going to need a booze cellar. This should be separate from your food cellar as you'll be keeping this warm enough that food would instead rot. Dig two layers down, lay some floor in, and build a brazier and a line of torches. The cellar will naturally be too cold without any of these, but you can manually flip them on and off, and the fire will actually warm the room up. You can use these like a thermostat to keep the room at a perfect temperature for any time of year, although you will need to manually check this every day or two as it grows cooler and warmer as seasons pass. It's disappointing, but the answer is no. Assigning a pet that can fight, like a dog or wolf, to a settler will make them follow that person even when the villager's job is to run out and hunt. During incursions, this pet will help the settler battle. However, instead of helping the hunt, they're just going to tag along and watch what's happening. Even if you manually draft the villager and tell them to attack wildlife, the pet will still watch. Hell, even if the wildlife retaliates and starts beating your colonists unconscious, the pet will just sit there and watch. Not unless you're willing to make some ethical sacrifices. You can keep almost everything underground, from production to shrines to entertainment. However, food becomes the main issue. You can't grow crops underground. You need unroofed dirt or grass for that. Skeps technically can produce underground, but at a fraction of their normal speed. A skilled colonist is still going to take four whole days of working the same skep for one batch of honey. You can pen animals underground, but you're not going to get any food to actually feed them with. You could have settlers venture out to hunt wild animals, but that violates the spirit of being an underground colony, so there's no real way to set your colonist hunger, unless you start eating people. See, raids are going to throw themselves at your door, and if you play on a sufficiently high difficulty and have a wealthy colony, a lot of raiders will throw themselves at your door. You can chop each corpse up into dozens of meat. You can do this with merchants and traders too. You can also use these corpses, or the raw meat from them, to bait wild animals to come into your settlement, at which point you can kill them without seeing the sun. 
Settlements that are built underground or into hillsides tend to result in way more resources than you actually need, especially on mountain maps where you're inundated with limestone. This won't decay, meaning that you'll be filling ever-growing stockpiles. But there are two good ways to get rid of it. You can make and then deconstruct buildings, which gets rid of 40% of whatever it costs, or you can build buildings and pack them up to sell to merchants. Doing this will give you money, and will get rid of them quicker, but it will mean less construction experience and requires you to store all these boxed up building kits until a merchant caravan arrives. Make shrines if you want to get rid of material the quickest, and make kilns if you want to actually sell them for the most value. You start the game with 3 settlers in the default scenario, but custom scenarios can have you starting with between 1 and 10. After that, the only way to get settlers is through random events. There's no way to increase the frequency of these, and thus grow your village more quickly. You continue to get these events forever, but they become less and less frequent as you get more villagers. You'll start to stagnate around the mid-20s after 10 to 12 years in-game. Assuming you have the default start, you're going to get about 5 people your first year, about 3 your second, and then 1 or 2 a year after that. Trebuchets are massive and destructive siege weapons that can spawn in with raids even early on in your first year. The chance for them to spawn in starts somewhat low, even in massive raids of 30 to 40 high tier enemies. However, this gets increased by a lot if you do too well against previous raids by taking little to no damage to either your villagers or your buildings. You can game the system to allow some settlers to get hurt, but you can also deal with them in one of a couple ways. The first is just attacking them directly. A colonist with a crossbow can destroy them in one shot and or kill the operator in two most of the time. You are going to need to sally forth with everyone, or keep one settler hidden where they can attack the trebuchets after the main raiding party runs past them. The second option is usually better. Ignore the trebuchets and tank some of their shots while you kill enough of the foot soldiers to count as a win. At that point, the trebuchets will immediately leave. You will take some damage like this. Clay and wooden walls or similarly flimsy roofs will get destroyed in one hit. Production buildings can also go down in one or two. However, inaccurate trebuchets may not hit the same spot multiple times, and their damage to settlers is honestly pretty low. A lot of these questions came from the comments section, so if you've got something you'd like me to address, drop it down below. Alternatively, if you've liked this video, you'll love a deep dive I did into animals to go over just about everything there is to know about them.